News coming out of Cuba today. The release of controversial artist El Sexto after he was jailed for two months. Local 10 is the one and only TV station to speak to him following his release. Plus, we have storm damage on the island nation to tell you about and a visit from Miami Archbishop Thomas Wenske. Local 10's Hatzel Bella is the one and only reporter from a local TV station in the entire United States to be based in Cuba, and he has the exclusives. Here in Havana, weather is the big story this morning. Take a look behind me. This is what we saw as we were driving into work. Waves crashing against the Malecon, so much so that they have closed off several portions of this very busy highway along the ocean here. And they're also keeping pedestrians away from this Malecon because they want to make sure that everybody stays safe. Let's take you to a different picture here. This is in Parque Central where we saw a tree that toppled because of the winds crashing onto this car. You can see some of the damage there breaking the windshield uh, the result obviously of strong winds that we got overnight we also had some rain the other story we are following is that of el sexto that graffiti artist who is really well known in the exile community for his work anti-castro work here he is talking about being in jail for the past two months He's been behind bars since the day after Fidel Castro died. Graffiti artist Danilo Maldonado, known as El Sexto, says he was arrested for damaging state property. He did spray paint the words Se Fue or He's Gone, referring to Fidel's death on the prominent Havana Libre Hotel in Havana. He was told he did not show any respect for the greatest thing to Cuba, meaning Fidel. 55 days in different prisons, he says, second time for Maldonado. Donado, who gained notoriety for his controversial art, painting the Castro names on pigs. Maldonado says this time in prison was more emotionally draining because he was moved from prison to prison, told he would likely face trial, and says at times they would grab him by the neck and blackmail him, telling him they would limit his family visits. Arroyo Arena is where El Sexto lives. This is a small neighborhood in the outskirts of Havana, about 30 minutes outside. He hopes that he can continue living here and then traveling to Miami so he can continue doing his activism. The ability to travel in and out of the country, some argue, shows the Cuban government is not threatened by these dissidents. In the past, the Castro government has questioned their credibility of activists like El Sexto because outside groups allegedly pay them to do this kind of work. We also caught up with Archbishop Thomas Wenske, who was here over the weekend. He was here for the installation of the new Archbishop in Camagüey, Willy Peña. We talked to Wenske about the new Trump era and the future of U.S. relations. Wenske says we have to move forward, not backwards, even though he realizes the changes here in Cuba are happening very slowly. It's seen positively by the Cuban people, and therefore... I think it is a benefit for the Cuban people. On the exile, especially the hardliners, Wenske tells us this. You can't build a future of hope on the foundation of resentments. Wenske realizes that history is filled with pain, but he says that you have to look for the common good of the Cuban people. Reporting in Havana, Hatzovala, Local 10 News.